Uh, so let's talk a little bit about, about uh, Yvette Cooper. Uh, earlier in the week, she launched a counter extremism strategy. Later on, she launched a counter uh, illegal immigration strategy. Let's talk a bit about the extremism first. I mean, Tom, one of the things that struck me is that she says she wants to counter harmful ideas. Yeah. And misogyny was the focus of it, extreme, extreme misogyny. Extreme misogyny, yeah. So this um, review, or I think that she dubbed it a analytical sprint or something mm. like that, which is a fantastic technical. Well, that's got a management <laughs> speed. Yeah. So we're all waiting for the analytical sprint. Um, is to, we'll look at the usual things of Islamism and the far right, but also mm. this this focus on these nefarious trends, particularly focused, um, the one that was singled out was extreme misogyny. Naturally, They're going to need some more adjectives, aren't they? No. Extreme <laughs> How extreme are we talking? Uh, naturally, just as you know, Andrew Tate pictures are plastered over all of the news reports because yeah. it's supposedly hypnotic hold this character act has apparently over our young men um and i think it's already um got room for a fair amount of mockery you yeah. know and it's it's part and parcel of this tendency of when you take an issue like extremism the tendency of certainly the liberal left who are now in government firmly in the ascendancy is to try and downplay the main issue which is mm. islamist extremism or to change the subject onto issues that are a bit more comfortable talking about. Up until this point, obviously, that was the, the far right, which yeah. despite the horrendous scenes of recent weeks, rem remain a fraction of the terror threat if you go by attacks, body count, or MI5 caseload. Um, but now it seems like there's been this attempt to kind of bring other forms of just a nebulous sense of extremism into the mix. I mean, we've seen it recently with the misogyny issue, the, a kind of ongoing debate about whether kind of incels are a nascent terror threat. I yeah. believe the authorities already collect data on prevent referrals on an incel basis, but it's quite a small proportion, as you can imagine. And this seems like the continuation of that. But I think more than anything else, these things are often a bit of a displacement activity. They can have authoritarian consequences in yeah. terms of bringing more and more forms of harmful speech into the crosshairs of government. But I think it's often a product of the fact they'd rather not talk about where the vast majority of this threat comes from, because that's a bit uncomfortable as far as they're concerned. Yeah. They'd rather beat up on Andrew Tate and get some headlines. It seems like another example of that. And and isn't there a danger of, you know, continually casting the net wider, not just in terms of, you know, the authoritarian implications for that, for free speech and things like that, but also, you know, we hear time and time again, whenever there's a major atrocity, the person is often known to the authorities and yet nothing seems to have been done. Nothing actually seems to have been preventing them. You know, so surely there is a cost as well to tracking some, you know, dateless wonder who posts on 4chan. Yeah, well, I mean, that said, they seem to be quite eager to lock some of these people up like yeah. if you say something bad you do something bad in the real world mm. as people have been cataloging on twitter like x for a little bit now you do say something bad or do something bad in the real world you probably get slapped on the wrist you say something yeah. bad online it's, it's all, all hell breaks loose but yeah that, that sense that the authorities and the great article on spike cataloging some of this the inability to mm. get to grips with the like sheer fact that when the system not functioning the way it should, when people should be removed from the country for breaking the law, et cetera, et cetera, so much just it seems to, and is a nebulous phrase, they fall through the cracks. Yeah. And the, the, as you said, when they cast the net wider, it, it seems to get worse. But it also seems that this is the kind of elite's only way of getting to grips with these things. The only way that like the reality of kind of violent sexual offense is committed maybe by migrants or maybe by anyone, but the only way it can get through their kind of re reality field is if they catalog it as misogyny. I was reminded a bit in the wake of the those Infamous uh, New Year's uh, kind of mass groping sessions in Germany, yeah. in like Cologne and Cologne, elsewhere. Yeah. Like the only thing that anyone can say is, "Oh, this just shows we got a real problem with misogyny." Mm. It's not that we got a problem with our borders or a problem with integration or anything like yeah. that. It's that the only way they can catalog it is under these kind of nebulous terms like misogyny. Or as yeah. Jess Phillips did at the time, liken it to people just getting wolf whistled on Broad Street in Birmingham on a Friday night. Yeah. So you know they can even downplay it on its own terms. But it's um it's. Just on your point, Fraser, about the casting net, it's like they're kind of they're quite happy casting net so wide it catches everything, but stops absolutely nothing. Yeah, and you have seen that with the failures which have taken place in relation to Islamist extremism. Which let's let's not forget, you know, ninety five people have been killed since two thousand five and seven seven um, due to Islamist attacks, compared to three in far right attacks. It's yeah. not to say you should pick and choose which flavour of nihilistic violence you're more concerned about but you clearly see where most of the resources should be trained on yeah. and yet there has been this disparity the Shawcross review another review last year was published and um, noted that basically the what was being considered Islamist extremism by prevent was drawn far too um, narrowly and yeah. what was considered extreme right wing 
extremism by prevent um was drawn far too broad to the point he even suggested you know mildly controversial right-wing commentary points were leading for you know teachers to suggest that a pupil should be referred to this program which is about stopping people from being drawn into terrorism this should Mm. be very serious the last set of prevent referrals numbers that they had it was something like 11 percent were for islamism and 18 or 19 were for the far right yeah it's crazy disparity and it obviously it completely doesn't match up with the people that MI5 are having to deal with, which yeah. the vast majority of that caseload is is Islamist. Now, regardless of the uh, criticisms you might have about Prevent is a very dysfunctional and liberal system in a lot of ways, that it's quite clear that the one thing you don't want to do at the moment is to flood the whole counter-extremism system with loads of Andrew Tate fanboys or something yeah. like that. That's obviously not useful. Um, and also, there's been many of these attacks, whether we're talking about the murder of David Amos, the Reddings stabbing, all these people were, were on the radar of the authorities. Mm. Salman Abadi, you know, MI5 were given information that he might have been involved in a bomb plot, but it sli- slipped through their fingers. This is clearly there is an issue of focus here, even if it's not completely a zero sum game. You would think yeah. that all of your energies would be focused on where the main threat is, and yet it's not for reasons of just looking good on social media rather than anything more serious than that. Well, it kind of fits in, doesn't it? So, I mean, obviously MI5 and the regular police are separate, but there's a kind of broad sense that what the kind of authorities are really good at is cataloging things, mm. yeah. but not very good at actually dealing with them. So you yeah. have your phone snatched or something in the street, you ring up, you get a crime reference number, but you know that there's no way in hell yeah. that, that anything's actually going to happen. And similarly, we move to this kind of almost like cataloging state. It can track, it can monitor things online, it can generate all these files, but can it actually keep the peace or enforce law and order? No. 